Imagine you're spending a lovely Saturday afternoon at the Natural History Museum. Families, students, couples, and you are mulling about, taking in the wonders of science. There are dinosaurs, plants, graphs, statues, fossils, rocks, so many words. There's too much information. What does it all mean? What does it mean for me, you wonder? You're not alone. The science of our changing climate has pretty much been settled for decades. We know how the Earth system will respond to future greenhouse gas emissions. What we don't know is how much gas humans will keep emitting. But in order to make use of the science and protect each other from the worst effects of climate change, we need to educate and motivate our friends, families, and neighbors to act. So let's go back and see how climate science can become climate action. We use social science to understand how people perceive new information, how they learn from it, and how they decide whether to act on it. For example, eye tracking is a tool used to literally track your eyes, which allows researchers to see how a person looks at a piece of information, which is a clue to how they're interpreting and processing it. Here you are, happening upon a nice museum display. When you first see a piece of information, your eyes will be drawn to certain features that jump out at you because there are bright colors or large items. Next, you might start looking at the information more intentionally and relating it to what you already know. Your internal monologue might go something like, okay, I've seen a line graph before. The important information is usually up top, like a title, and on the axes, showing the variables. Once you find important pieces of information, you'll process what it might mean. In this case, it's showing temperature change in the past and in possible futures. If you're committed to understanding this graph, you'll spend a bit of time thinking, looking at the data, putting it all together. Maybe you'll get distracted in there too. After all, thinking is hard and there's a whole T-Rex over there. I get it. In this case, thankfully, the big idea is highlighted by this message right in the middle. Our choices matter. Your choices must matter. Wait, who's even telling us this? If the information is from a source you don't trust much, you might just ignore it. But let's say that you hold this museum in high regard, that's why you're here, and trust the science that they present. Now, is the information actually relevant to your life and the kinds of choices you make? Do you care? Let's keep looking. Hmm. Flooded houses, that's bad. More droughts, definitely bad. And it's affecting bears. If these are things that you care about, then climate change is definitely relevant to your values, which are what really motivate people to do something. I think we figured it out. And that was a lot of thinking. You stuck it out to make meaning from this information because it highlighted a big idea, came from a source that you trust, and it's relevant to your values. Because of those features, this learning experience is more likely to lead to action, even if right now you just need to go look at some fossils.